Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine uh, physician and a uh, prior researcher. So today's topic, we try to talk about uh, whether Omicron can cause lung COVID. Uh, we don't have any data at this point, and since the circulation of uh, uh, Omicron uh, in late December, we haven't seen any report of it. I think I take this as a good sign because probably not a lot of people have symptoms after the infection. And we, so far we know that uh, Omicron has only caused mild diseases and uh, they are not likely to infect the lungs. From my previous video, we talked about how lung COVID happened. So lung COVID does not correlate with the severity of an initial infection. It actually correlates with the severity of an inflammation marker. So the more inf uh, inflammation, the more symptom with the lung COVID. So in, uh, in my opinion, severity of lung COVID de depends on two factors. One, the total load of the virus in the body, not just in the lungs. And uh, two, individual immune re reaction to the virus. So let's look at uh, Omicron and see if uh, it can, in theory, cause lung COVID. And uh, first, we look at how much virus can into the bloodstream and look at how serious the virumia face. Uh, my opinion is that they are pretty mild. If you have a severe infection with lots of virus, and you should have a lot of symptoms, like a fever, like nausea, vomiting. So, so far, Omicron seems to be mild. Secondly, the length of infection is also important. The longer you're infected, the more virus is produced. And uh, so far, the, the course for the Omicron has been shorter than previous strains. And uh, third, the Omicron seems to be only replicating in the upper airway. So they came out of the body in the nasal secretion. So the chance of the inter stream is reduced, but still there. If they cannot enter cells, if they are in the bloodstream, they're still not causing problems. You know, like a, they are just like a sitting duck. They cannot replicate in the cells. They should be cleared up pretty quickly. Now, the next question would be, look at how the Omicron in the cells. We know from previous study, all COVID uh, infection started with interaction with ACE as a receptor. So they enter the cells through the ACE receptor. And uh, Omicron is no exception. At least the two studies have shown that uh, Omicron interact with ACE2 as well as uh, other strains, uh, if not better than them. So what happened? If they can interact with ACE receptor, they should be infecting the cells as well as other strains. But apparently they are not. It may lie in the fact that uh, you know, all the COVID virus need to be primed before they enter the cells. For the previous strains, uh, the virus spark protein has to be digested by the proteus, uh, which is the enzyme. And uh, they actually use uh, an enzyme called type 2 transmembrane serine protease serine 2. And but this uh, transmembrane protein localized in junction with ACE2. So the virus can be primed and enter cell on spot. But apparently Omicron is not using this enzyme. So actually, they have to use a different enzyme called Cercepsin. The Cercepsin is not localized uh, normally on the cell membrane or outside cells. They are in the, in the lysosome. The theory is that uh, Omicron actually pass, can pass the prime phase and the inter ACE receptor right away, and they are primed later once they enter the cells. The study did not explain why Omicron does not need to be primed. Now, I doubt this is, the finding, this is the true because they are not much different than the prior strain. They probably still need a priming. The problem is uh, Omicron, if they need a priming, and uh, this enzyme is uh, actually localized in internal of cells, and uh, they don't have access to it, then they cannot enter cells. Let's look at uh, how the Omicron can enter cells uh, if we assume that a conception is needed for priming. Okay, let's look at upper airway. So epithelium cells in the upper airway uh, is a major cell uh, that uh, protects us from the infection and outside environment. These cells have a special structure called a secretome. So secretome constantly secretes out mucus 
the mucus contains various proteins, majority of them actually the protein. So one of the proteins is actually conception C. And uh, they might explain why Omicron can enter the upper airway easily because they can be primed right there and enter the epithelium through the ACE receptor. But it's a different story in other cell types. And uh, there is only a small amount of secreted conception by lysosome in other organ tissues. Extracellular conception can be increased if there is a remodeling process or if there is inflammation or if there is cell injury. So let's look at a few scenarios. The first is that the secretion needs a lysosome in an acidic environment. Initially, we assume that a hydroxychloroquine can raise the pH of a lysosome, makes the virus less likely to enter. But it turned out that the origin strain does not use conception. It does not need a lysosome. But in the Omicron, maybe a different story now. And uh, they might have required this uh, acidification of endomysosome. As a result, uh, at least in theory, hydroxychloroquine might be able to prevent the long COVID effect from the infection. But uh, this is never been said in a stone that the initial theory may be wrong. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Number two is the uh, extracellular conception uh, is increased uh, in diseases with the increased remodeling of extracellular space. Uh, this happens most time in cancers inflammation, rheumatoid arthritis, and bone disorders, and heart disease. So Omicron probably will be more likely to infect organs in these conditions. Therefore, increase the chance of long COVID. Number three, children. So children uh, actually has a faster turnover of their bones due to rapid growth. And uh, they may have a high level of extracellular conception and uh, based on this, Omicron may have a higher incidence in children than in adults. But only time can tell, and this is not set in stone. But whether there is any study about the long COVID in Omicron, uh, I look at just uh, the literature, and uh, only one study uh, has performed so far, and it's not published yet. So I can only look at uh, their uh, brief description. So there is 443 patients with Omicron. They have no symptoms, mild symptoms, or moderate symptoms. Nobody has severe symptoms. In the median term, they did not define that. Uh, they have a 3% reduction in the lung volume and uh, an increased airway resistance, 1 to 2% a decrease in heart function and a 2% reduction in the kidney function. And also, they observe two to three times more with a mild venous thrombosis compared to the normal person. Okay, and also 41% increase in the inflammation marker compared to the normal person. And uh, they state that uh, this study is significant, indicating that a patient may develop long-term symptoms because of it. But I do not agree. Uh, I do not think this actually is significant. I take this as a positive result for not developing any long COVID. So, you know, airway problem is very common in any upper respiratory infection, even common cold. It's not a problem unique to Omicron. And the heart and the renal dysfunction in the 1 to 2%, maybe just because patients, has, you know, have some sickness and they are not moving and they, uh, they are dehydrated. And uh, as for the rate of mild venous thrombosis and, uh, uh, and inflammation marker, uh, compared to the previous uh, COVID strains, and uh, this is a very minimal. We're talking about a 100 one time food increase in the previous uh, strains. So this is not significant. So taken together, I do not believe a normal person with a normal immune function, the Omicron can cause long COVID. But people with uh, underlying medical conditions, such as cancer, chronic inflammation, autoimmune immune diseases, uh, bone disorder and heart disease may have to be monitored for long COVID. And uh, also, we should look at children if they develop more symptoms than adults. Thank you for listening.